Bags down, on. spikes on. Welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitzman. I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News. And now we have our second installment of our guest hosted episodes. If you want to be a part of it, you want to have a chance to join us for an episode each month, make sure that you join our inside lane. So shoot me over a message on Instagram. We can add you to our private group. And today joining us, uh, we have a three-person hosted episode, so it should be a good one. We have uh, Ethan and Antonio joining us. We have a lot of great things to talk about, but uh, no, nice to see you guys again. How y'all been? What Doing up? Good. Good. What's going on? How you been, man? I'm good. I'm good. It's uh, It's been a long time since we've been able to chat. Uh, so, I mean, how, how, how have you guys been been looking at this season so far? A lot of, a lot of stuff been going down. Yeah, man, it's been it's it's definitely it's definitely been very entertaining, um, you know, in the world in the world of professional and collegiate tra- running, especially high school, too. Um, you know, I really I really like the way track and field's going. I definitely think it's on a rise. Um, you know, it's right. Re- it's really entertaining. Yeah. yeah. Well, let, t- tell the people a little bit about yourselves. Uh, what's your guys track and field background and uh, a little bit like that? You want to go first, Ethan? Yeah, I'll go first, sure. So um, I'm Ethan Arce. I went to uh, Christian Brothers Academy High School, um, kind of a distance powerhouse back in the early 2010s, um, still going on. Uh, I went to Mount St. Mary's University where I met Colin, uh, my official visit. Um, I went there for two years. Now I'm in my junior year here at uh, Montclair State, um, a 400, 400 hurdler, uh, dabbling into the 800 and uh, in the long jump as well. Um, I've been running since my freshman year of high school. Um, and it was, you know, we, I was multi-time state champion and whatnot. It was, it was really fun. Um, and to, uh, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much it. I'm a pretty basic guy. Uh, yeah, about it. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm Antonio. Um, so I was uh, a late bloomer on track. I didn't start running track until my senior year of high school during, uh, outdoor season. I didn't even run indoor. Um, I set a couple of records for my school. Uh, I got recruited by a couple D3 schools. I went to York College in Pennsylvania for a year. Um, I led the sprints on the uh, for that team, I guess you could say. Um, did I did pretty well. Uh, put my name in the in the portal and transferred to the Mount where I met Ethan. Uh, ran there for a year. Um, I stopped going, and then now I coach speed development. So you know, I was pretty late on the track scene, but you know. I did my thing when I was, I did my thing. So we're, we're there you go. There yeah. you go. Well, let's get right into it. We got some exciting things to talk about today for sure. And uh, the number one track finally has some beef, man. Like <laughs> there, we don't get this. We don't get this very often. So when it happens, we got to talk about it. So if for those that don't know what went down, so this past week, uh, Craven Gillespie, who is a sprinter for us, he was the anchor leg of the four by one at the Olympics. He does a uh, reaction videos on his YouTube channel of races. And so mm-hmm. he did a reaction video of Christian Coleman, uh, winning the 60 meters at Milrose games. And after the race, uh, Christian Coleman did a wave and no one really knew what it was about or, or anything. He had posted it on his Instagram, a picture of him waving. And, uh, in the reaction video, Craven Gillespie's like, now I know. I know who he's waving at. Hey, all I'm going to say is, I know who he waving at. Because me and him talk, I know who he waving at. I ain't finna start no, I ain't finna start no outside beef, whatever, whatever. We'll do, we'll. At the end of the day, here's what I got to say. Me and Coleman talk, that's my boy. I just feel like, and I'm not, I'm not saying this what he's saying. Because I know a lot of people like twist up words. People in this sport, they get in front of the media. Obviously, that's the media's job. They get in front of the media and they all of a sudden become a preacher. Now, if you don't understand what that means, you start rambling, you start talking, you start over talking, you start doing too much. You get what I'm saying? And I feel like. I don't know. So when you get waved at uh, Marvin Bracy Williams Jr., who, if you're a fan of the show, you know, we actually recently had him as a guest. Uh, he took a screenshot of that that video, posted it on his 
Instagram story on his Twitter saying like, yo, you know what my name is, bro. Like get, get my name out your mouth and tell me when your schedule is. Cause we going to race then like, let's settle this on the track. And uh, that it kind of went down a little bit and we don't see this from track a lot. So, I mean, what, what was y'all's first reaction? Antonio, what was your first reaction? You saw like, Oh, there was a little, you know, a little tension going on in the track world. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, me and Ethan were talking about it last night, man. I love it. I love to see it, man. It, it, because you think about it, you know, there's a line in, in sports between, between marketing and between talent. Right. So every sport needs some type of, of tension in it. It's just, you know, human nature. We like to see, you know, grown men, butt heads, um, you know, whatever it is in us, but I like it. It's competition um i think it's gonna get people into it more you know track is 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 oftentimes passive oftentimes everybody gets along and and we kind of just run and and people aren't really too too into everybody else it's it's more of a mental you know battle within yourself so to see um you know getting some some tension people really getting in it i think that's just going to bring more entertainment to the track world because um you know we all we all need a little bit uh we all need a little bit of smoke in the in the in the track world you know we could use that yeah, man, I love it. I, I absolutely love it. I think that, like Antonio said, to you know, the sport needs it. We you know we saw we saw we we see some rivalries, especially when it came around the Olympics time. How, but not rivalries in beef, um, like you know, with Carson Vorholm and Ry Benjamin. If that's something that we could have seen from them, I think that would have only gained more attention when it came to like the four hundred hurdle finals. You know, yeah, they have that rivalry, but it's kind of like a love rivalry. Like they have like just the mutual respect for each other, mutual respect for each other. But like. If we could have seen a little bit of beef like that, I think that's, you know, that that would have been pretty cool. But, you know, to see something more like it, you know, it tracks it tracks those people that are not really your day one track and field fans that are like, you know, what the heck's going on? Why? Why? Why are these two professionals having beef? You know, it's, everybody, it's, needs, everybody needs something to, to draw them in. It's just like, um, you know, I think that's what UFC is so great at is they find someone who's entertaining or someone who's talented and entertaining and they have clips that boom off and, and and everybody ends up you know wanting to watch it whether you know who they are or not you know who conor mcgregor is you know who people like that are because of their entertainment factor you know the yeah. things they say and you know not to say we have to be yeah as much as that but you know nobody hates a little bit of you know somebody needs something to change it up to get you know people who aren't necessarily into track yet really into it Exactly. I mean, let's take a look at last year, what happened with Shakari Richardson versus the entire country of Jamaica. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Like she was she was single handedly fighting yeah. battles against an entire country. And mm-hmm. like people were watching, like if you yeah. go on any Facebook track and field group, you'll see a, if the second somebody posts a picture of Shakari Richardson, you see thousands of comments of, of you know, of USA uh, fans versus Jamaican fans yeah. just debating about yeah. her. And it's like, hey, if you can bring that tension, uh, you know, onto the, you know, bring it to another scale, like have it, you know, instead of it being one person versus entire country, having two athletes going against it, you know, for one, one against one another, like, that's good because it yeah. brings us an extra thing. Cause like now, like let's say they were racing in some just random meet, like not a not a championship, just some random meet. I bet you people are gonna watch because like, wait a minute, those are the people that were were talking against each other, right? Well, yeah. I gotta watch this one now. Like, so yeah. it's gonna be exciting. And think, and, and think about it, you know, like Shikari had her it literally within a few months, a few months span, a few weeks with the with the Jamaicans and and had this craziness, and she's getting you know shouted out by Drake on on his album yeah, yeah, yeah. a track athlete getting you know shouted out like that just over a little bit of you know just a little bit of hint of beef just yeah. imagine what if you know continuous build up and whatnot get it televised by nbc you know get put you know get put on the grand scale i'm sure it'll attract a lot of attention oh yeah it's gonna be good and uh another one that i think has been building just like this um that we saw kind of escalate because of the NHL all-star game, the NFL all-star game or pro bowl. We got Tyreek Hill. Uh, he was, he shouted out Usain Bolt. Baiting Usain Bolt into coming out of retirement to race me. You know what I'm saying? You saying you, you hear that Usain Bolt? Is that a challenge? You want to race? Challenge. That is a challenge. All right, so let's set a date for that race. Does that sound good? We should set a date for that race. Should Tyreek Hill be talking to all this trash when he's coming in last in the 40 man? No, he got caught in 4K by Usain Bolt, put on his Instagram story. Like, really? Like, this is who's trying to go against Usain Bolt? 
let's just remind everyone that Usain Bolt, I believe, ran a 4-2-2 in sneakers without trying. Retired. Yeah, retired. So I really, I really fail to believe that yeah. anybody, anybody of any scale is going to be able to give Usain Bolt the time of day of getting his attention. I, I, I understand that Tyreek back in his day in high school and whatnot, he was a really, you know, profound track and field athlete. And sure, if you put his time and energy into that instead of football, I think he would have been a great track and field athlete. And I know there was talks about him possibly doing trying out for the Olympic team, uh, you know, this past summer, but uh, you, Usain Bolt has him by a mile. He, it, it, I mean, I love the entertainment and the crossover, but like, it was the same thing with, uh, you know, the, um, the Seahawks wide receiver, Metcalf. DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf, when he, when he tried. Now, listen, I love, I love that he, you know, he tried dabbling in it. Um, but obviously, you know, it was, it was a complete separation. I think the same thing would happen to Tyreek. He had potential, though. I think I think Metcalf had potential in it, but uh, you know, uh, yeah, Tariq Hill, he's he's uh, you know, he's a little bit out of pocket for that, but that's whatever though, because you know, it's it's fun to hear it, gets people gets people excited, you know. Every we need a little bit of uh, you know, everybody needs you know the little kid, you know, trying to step up to the big kid and you know say something to him just to get him you know rough a little bit because everybody loves to hear it. I think it like, I think it really goes into like like the beef component, you know, like we all like to see you know, competitive nature in a sport, you know, you had, you know, Michael Johnson and, and Donovan Bailey, or you had uh, Usain Bolt and, and Justin Gatlin or the, you know, America four by one versus Jamaica four by one, you know, we all love tension in a sport. We like to see people compete, you know, nobody wants to be, you know, lackadaisical all the time or like uh, we don't want it to just be peaceful all the time because, you know, it's entertainment at the end of the day too. Yeah. This was like a really, this is like a race. If I'm a meet director, I am getting all of my money that I have and I am paying these two athletes to get it. I'll be like, yo, I will cancel every other race so I can <laughs> have these two athletes compete because in my mind, this is like, this is like the Conor McGregor Khabib, like yeah. of track and yeah. field. Like this is as big as it gets like yeah. there. You do not get like, even if it's not going to be competitive, which I don't think it will be, but it's, you're going to be getting any NFL fans that are watching it. You're going to be getting track fans that want to watch it. Yeah. I guarantee you everyone on ESPN is going to be talking about it. Like all yeah. of the, we saw how yeah. much those, you know, the talking head shows were discussing the DK Metcalf. Imagine right. if you got the Tyreek Hill, like yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah. going to be big. You know what? And you could do it into a scale too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, like, you it it. A, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. Like, like a scale where like the, you know, how they have like that Boston race where they literally run in the middle of the street. Like you can gain, you know, you can get an attractive location as well, <laughs> even if it's indoor, outdoor, whatever. And um, there's there's so much availability. It's just you know. So I love I love that I love that yeah. Yo, the middle of Times Square. Yo, put a hundred meter track oh, middle that's, of Times yes. Square. That's Nobody's insane. stopping that from happening. Nobody right that. in the middle, man. Like, I love throwing track lanes in the middle of cities, but like I the you know when they were having those like 150 straight races yeah, in the city. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, man, you know that that's that's some special stuff. You know, switching up locations and things like that. I mean, we we can throw a lane anywhere. For, you know, you just get a little yeah, bit of turf yeah. and throw it in the middle anywhere. Give these yeah. people a bag. Well, this is what you got to do. We're going to have the Craven Gillespie, Marvin Bracey. You're going to have the Tyree Kill, Usain Bolt, Shakari versus Jamaica. We'll have Rye Benjamin versus Grant Holloway in the 200 hurdles. All of that yeah. in one track meet. It'll be the, it'll pay, the only pay-per-view track meet at, ever. Yeah. Yeah. And, if the, and bag, if the bag is big enough, yeah. it doesn't matter what it is. As long as the bag is big enough, I think, you know, yeah. we can start to get people talk. Because you, you think – for free, they're just like, haha, that's funny. But then you're like, all right, well, let's put some money on it. Everybody's like, whoa, wait a second. I, I think mm-hmm. that's, I think we'll do that. Yeah. So. Exactly. We need to see it. We need to see it. But um, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's take a look back at uh, some standout performances from this weekend. Obviously, we had the New Balance Grand Prix going on. We saw some pretty great times. Uh, women's side saw the uh, world lead with Briscoe. Uh, we saw also on the 60 meter side, uh, Lyles putting down a PR of 656. I mean, yeah. looking at the competition, uh, Antonio, what were some of your standout performances or some things that you saw from this weekend that were like, all right, that's kind of impressive? I'm a sprint guy. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm going to go home with Lyles on this one, man. It's special. It's special to see an athlete like that, you know, just the, the, you know, the reach, 
that he has and, you know, and just how long he is. It's, it's crazy to see him be able to cross over into, you know, different events. He can kind of, you know, he can kind of dip his foot in every sprint event and it's crazy and he's impactful. And I think it's special to see him do that. And I just love seeing, you know, great sprinting. You know, he has, you got my heart with that, but, um, you know, I think it was really special watching him run. You know, he's beautiful form and, uh, you know, he's, he's almost a textbook runner and it's, it's great to see. Yeah. Uh, I, I really, I thought this meet was really, you know, really well run, you know, definitely good marks all over the board. Uh, one that got me, um, was Spain's me call, uh, in the 3000, how he literally said he set a national and European indoor 3000 record. Um, that kind of went like under a radar. He ran, I think it was seven thirty. Um, and that's, you know, that, you know, that's pretty freaking disgusting. And it just kind of went under the rare just because, you know, it's America. So we're obviously going to pay attention to the Noah Lyles and the Grand Holloway. Um, but nonetheless, uh, there were, it, it's just amazing how many world leading times and PBs and um, like how Holloway just he's continuing his indoor winning streak. It's just continuous. It feels like no one can stop him in those hurdles. Um, and it's just I think it was an overall really well done meet. Um, definitely great competition. Yeah, I mean, on both the men and the women's side, there was a national yeah. record for the 3K. It was, uh, yeah. what, Gabriella DeBoer-Stafford. Yeah. Yes, yeah, Canadian record. Yeah, Canadian record. So it's like there were some crazy performances for the distance, um, and it was it was pretty exciting to watch. Luckily enough, I was there to be able to see it in person, and there were some really cool things that this, this meet had that others don't have. Like right after the athletes were getting off the track, like they all the, – like a whole bunch of kids and, you know – people were able to stand right where they get off and they were signing autographs and taking pictures. And so it was like really cool to see like athletes that are Olympic champions, world record holders, taking the time out of their day to take pictures and autographs with every single one of their fans that was right there. Cause I mean, that doesn't happen. Like you're, you're never going to be able to go to an NFL game and then they take pictures and autographs for every single person right when they finish. And so, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's it was, important. it was it's important though. I think that, I think that's definitely, it's important for the sport because if you want to gain the attraction of, you know, the upcoming generations and being able to get traction like that, it's important to be able to, you know, that one kid's going to remember a signature from Grand Holloway, you know, one day when they're put to running middle school track, they're like, Oh my God, I, you know, I got to look at my signature from my picture I from did. Grand Holloway. Like that's it. That's important <laughs> because it, grow, it grows the sport. And I think yeah. it's definitely that it's only a positive. And I think track is a very, um, it's a very tight knit group. It's a very like it, it's a. It, I think they're not Hollywood in a sense that, you know, you you DM, you know, a top level NBA player right now or a top level NFL player. The chances of them, you know, getting back to you or answering you are a lot slimmer, um, especially if you don't have a bigger following or you just can't, you know, create that way. But track, I feel like it's very intimate in the sense that, um, it's not as hard to reach athletes. You can talk to them, you know, um. They're kind of also even when they're at the top level, they're they're still very hungry and trying to get their name out and get opportunities. So they are very, you know, they're they're still in tune with that. So I think it's a it's a great sport because of the intimacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, looking back at the performances. So like one one that I thought was super impressive as well, like we had mentioned, I mentioned it earlier, was uh, was Briscoe running her 711 uh, world leading, not 711, uh, 707. Sorry. Was it 707? I think it was 707. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. I'm pretty sure it was 707 for her world leading time in the 60. And she's unsigned. She doesn't. Yeah. So that the top two times in the world for the women in the 60 are unsigned athletes, which yeah. is like crazy. It's crazy it's, to think it, it, it's it's actually I actually I like it. I like it, though, because it you know it doesn't hold them down to a single brand or whatnot. But it also just shows like there's there's a lot there's a lot of competition for great athletes when it comes to branding and there you know it, 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 I, I really I really actually kind of like them being you know unattached I guess you kind of say yeah I feel like they'll get it too you know go get that bag you know they'll, they'll get it soon so you know you, uh that's the thing about track um running in high high level meets and and getting you know endorsement sponsorships are you know what really makes people kind of take a deep breath and, and feel financially stable and stuff like that so you know i i love seeing people get you know i love seeing people get a bag and, and get their money and, and be um you know set set for life so you know hopefully we can see them you know get with somebody and, and yeah won't be surprised won't, won't be surprised if they get signed soon Let's oh yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. it'll probably be after outdoors i'm sure they want to yeah. see companies want to see how they do at world championships and everything yep. but mm -hmm. um 
Next topic, I want to turn it over to y'all. Uh, speed development. So we've been seeing a lot of changes in coaching styles and, and everything like that. If you're from so one uh, channel that I, I'm really interested in, I'm not sure if you guys are or the listeners, but Ray's Takes, former sprinter. He does, uh, uh, he does a lot of talk about speed development and is well as a fast university they're really growing yeah. as yeah, as a yeah. development within speed but coaching styles seem to be changing i mean what what have you guys noticed on you know as being more closely knit to what's going on with the the athlete side of things what's like what's different nowadays that you might not have seen a few years ago so i think Shout out to Fast University out in Texas. Shout out to Les Bowman out in California. I think those are the two, you know, people really holding it down in, in their area, as well as a lot of other coaches too. Um, you know, it's it's pretty crazy to see the shift. But you know, as as working in, in speed development and stuff like that, that's kind of what I've been doing. Um, you know, I think the biggest change is it's more scientific based now. There's you know data tools and tracking tools and things that are really you know pinpointed towards you know getting people faster you know, improving top end, improving acceleration, things of that nature. Um, it's, 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 it's broken down to a science now and it's transitioning from, you know, a point where it was, you know, every school had kind of a legacy on how they, you know, believed in developing speed and, you know, every coach had their, um, I guess you could say their uh, philosophy on developing so whether that had been certain drills or you know certain breaks in between set uh reps or you know certain you know amount of volume in a workout everybody had their own thing but the thing with that is everybody's different nobody is the same so a philosophy may not work the same on every single athlete which is why we had injuries and you know load that was a problem so you know with the you know um incorporation of more science-based you know speed training it's becoming you know, a lot able, we were able to, you know, map load management, uh, volume during workouts, resistance that we have to apply during sprints, uh, things, things like that. So, you know, it's, it's something where it's not deniable. It, it, it's down to a point where we're scientifically, scientifically able to explain speed. Whereas before a lot of people just believed you're either born fast or you're born slow. And that's not how it is. It's a hundred percent you're able to develop it. And there is some genetics in it. Yes. Um, fast switch muscle fibers and things like that, but it's something that's, you know, able to be developed. So I think we're going to see a, a major shift and I think we're going to see a lot of colleges um, implement it. And I think we're going to see a lot of professional coaches also, if not using it now using it. Yeah. I think, it, it, you know, especially from my end, he's, he's obviously the more speed developed guy here, as you could tell, but you know, just from a minimal scale, like noticing on when for my step up to college when I came to the mound, and uh, you know, shout out Coach Phillips. He yeah, yeah. Again, he was using video data and taking videos of us when we would start coming out of the blocks, and that was mm -hmm. something that was new to me. I we didn't I didn't have that in high school. So when you you take that into account, just literally just taking a video, fifteen second video of my block yeah. start, it made a world of difference when it came to my pushing out and being able to get that full extension coming out of the blocks. Um, and just different drills that we would do throughout practice. I think it's something that's important, yeah. especially just for, you know, the general, for the general athlete, just to be able to see and take into account, you know, how they come out of the blocks or how do they rotate their legs when they're running? It, it all, it makes a world of difference when it comes to yeah. their sprint, sprint speed. Um, and I just don't think it gets talked about enough. Um, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, the, obviously we have, you know, fast you and whatnot. Um, but, you know, on a smaller scale, just, you know, there's a lot of schools that you have the talent there that they just need to be, you know, they just need to be found. And, you know, I think it would make a world of a difference for especially high school. I think being able to incorporate that into high school, uh, you'll sports, you'll see, you'll see the numbers drop crazy. Yeah. It's cause, exactly, but it, it's tech because it, it, it's technical and, and it's, it's physical and there has to be an emphasis on, you know, getting better when we, uh, when you see athletes playing basketball, they are working with trainers, they're doing specific drills. They're also working on their physical game, NFL, it's specific drills, any sport you see, there's a physical component and a technical component and of skill. And, um, you know, just like Ethan was saying at the Mount, we really focused in, you know, coming out of high school, you know, we didn't do anything. You know, my coach told me, Hey, you're fast, just run you know, just run, run fast. We, we didn't do a huge emphasis on it. I, I just ran, you know, I was just fast and other people were, some people were not fast. And that's just kind of how it was in high school. And uh, you kind of felt left out if you weren't. And, 
um, we kind of took it into my own to, to improve it. And then when we get to high school, you know, we're at division one school, we were at the Mount and, you know, coach Phillips is breaking down our, our starts, breaking down our transition, you know, looking at our top end, looking at our mechanics, you know, just all this stuff. And it's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy difference, but you know, it's attainable to everybody now and Any, anybody, anybody can do this. You know, you can go out and, and you know, improve this and it's for everyone. And I think it's great because we're not gatekeeping it at all. So it's, it's nice to see that. And I think with the, the, you know, the more we get into it, the more you see it, uh, the more it's going to be a normal, it's going to be normalized totally within, within five years, I think is going to be the main way that I don't think there's going to be another way to teach speed. Yeah. Listen, man, none of this junk was around when I was in high school. I wish it was. <laughs> Boy, my coach, you know, shout out coach Lent. You're my favorite coach that I've ever had. But man, you had me out here doing like 10 200s in a dang hallway. <laughs> Listen, yeah. let me tell you this. This was the most BS workout I ever done. I hate, I hated this to this day. I, my oh, legs I still hurt. Too. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I was, I'm a pole vaulter. All right. Yeah. Your boy runs 10 steps and <laughs> I might do the 100 and in, I might even go up to a 200 or so. 200 yeah, or two. Yeah. Actually, I did a few four by fours, but everyone does that. And, so we had a workout in the hallway. So this is just a long hallway and it's you, you run down the hallway, you go around this bench that he put there and then you sprint back and it would be, uh, there was like four different groups of guys. So Cause you know, it's high school sprint and there's a big group. So it's like five, six people. There's like five groups of five or six. Cause there's like 50 people on the team in this tiny little corner of a hallway. Like you're all trying to fit into the like smaller than a classroom size. And so you run down, come back. And then the second, the next, that one group's done, you run down, come back. And so the amount of sweat and just disgustingness that was there, my shins were killing me, man. <laughs> my shins still kill me to this day. I wish they had some, you know, hey, sci scientifically, it don't look like you need to be doing these 10 200s. I'm, I'd be like, thank you. I'm, I'm yeah, checking out. <laughs> yeah. I'm out here in, in high school, I, in, in high school back at, at Christian Brothers, we had a dirt barn. A horse barn that we used to like a story a couple now listen it's it's you very unique uh you know we we've had we've had some uh, like flow track come out and you know do some videos on us and it's like it's crazy like we didn't have any of that training but like we ran in a dirt barn that literally was made meant for horses and you know you just you find a way to get it done but like yeah. it, it might not be it might not be the most recommended way when it comes to your shins and whatnot but you know you get it done yeah, yeah. we uh we uh in my high school we had this um Oh, we had, we didn't have a track at my high school. We just had a massive grass field in the back of a place that was built by farms. So we had cows mooing on each side of us and we're just running in this grass. Most times it was like muddy or you're slipping on something. And our coach was just like, just run, just run. So, I mean, I was like, I, I think I'm getting better. I think I, I don't really know, but it took me to a college to figure out like, Oh man, this is like, this is very different. <laughs> yeah. Once you get in college, that's when you start realizing all the stuff you didn't have. And you're like, man, how did I do this? It's yeah. It's tough. Well, mm -hmm. um, now I want to trans tra transfer over. That's, that's funny thing. But uh, to what I think is the biggest transfer we've seen in, uh, in college track and field in a mm -hmm. long time. So just recently, Tyra Gittens of formerly Texas A&M, she scored 28 points individually last year in the outdoor championship. So that is more than most teams score. She scored it individually, uh, has announced that she is transferring to the University of Texas uh, and is oh. going to be competing for them, who is currently number two in power rankings. So yeah. this is a she is joining an already powerhouse team and bringing potentially up for anywhere from 25 to 30 points to this team uh, that is now going to be challenging Florida. I mean, what, what do you guys think this, like this level of a transfer says about, you know, whether it's movement within track and field or just, you know, where things are going in the future for college track. Yeah, I think, I think it's, I think it's huge. Um, I, I, I was, I was thinking about it last night, you know, when, when I, we, I was thinking about it, it was like, you know, Tara Davis going pro, whatever. I think that's, you know, her, especially her being able to replace her in the long jump. Let's not forget, you know, Giddens went to train, went, went for Trinidad and Tobago and placed 10th in the long jump, you know, at Tokyo. So, you know, she, she, she's got on the world stage and from her to also go from Texas tech to Texas. 
that's a yeah. huge move right there, you know, especially in state, you know, in state. But I think her her ability to her, her ability to just compete and gain gain the points. It's only it's just it, it's only it's only a positive for Texas. Um, they're they're gonna they're gonna press Florida now. Honestly, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they get if they hop them over. You know, it's it's definitely something that I was taken you know by surprise. Um, but I like it. I think I think it only adds to the competitiveness. Yeah, some of them, some of them make Florida turn their head. You know, um, I think it's good. I think it's, I think it helps both teams. I think you need a little bit of fire under your belly. You need to know that somebody is coming for you. You know, I think it's 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 definitely a big move, and uh, Florida's gonna have to get ready, prepare for that, and yeah. And I think yeah. it's also important. Um, you know, that she's at Texas. There's also the pentathlon leader. You know, that's yeah. right there with her. You know, um, you know, Christine, Christine, Bla, uh, what is it? Bla, I can't even pronounce her last name. Christine something and she, she she she's the pentathlon leader currently so you know now that you have them two it's a that one two duo that's that's nasty that's you know that's plenty of free points right there for them mm-hmm. and she so she competes in the pent which is where Florida Anna Hall she competes in the pent so that could potentially take some points away there and add points so those points just double because you're in that yep. you're also in long jump where I mean Jasmine Todd I mean those are two athletes they're two of the top ones Anna Hall and Jasmine yeah. Todd they're two of the top athletes, just like how Tyra Gittin's top athlete. So if she could hop over either of those two, that just doubles the amount of points you're getting because you're oh. displacing them. But also, it's the same thing their way, where if they beat her, that just displaces there. So those two events are going to be two of the biggest events of the night because it's going to be, you know, if if Texas can beat there or, if, or Florida can, can stave off Gittin's, that's going to be huge, but she needs to get on the track. She hasn't competed yet. So we got to see yeah, her this weekend yeah. because you only got, you got this meet, you got your conference championship meet, and then it's nationals. So you got to, we, I know you're not doing a pent. It's going to be good that you're not, you know, have too many events on your legs, but you still need to qualify for the dang thing, which she will, but you know, <laughs> it's, you just got to do it a little more. Yeah, see it happen. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, cool. So, uh, Last thing we got going on, Ethan, you're mentioning you're you come coming from a, a distance background. We saw some crazy things coming out of Newberry Park um, yeah. with f- another four minute barrier being shattered. Uh, tell us about what you saw and what this means for the future of a uh, of a uh, track and field here. Yeah. Um, so at the Dr. Sander uh, challenge um, at the Armory this past weekend, well, uh, Newberry Park, I think, you know, come from. Christian Brothers Academy, you know, I always say it. it's just my high school is known for distance. We back in, I think we won, uh, you know, NXN Nationals back in 2011. Um, and we were, you know, we were the powerhouse cross country team. And then you had Loudoun Valley, um, you know, when I was around a sophomore, junior, um, you know, they were breaking D- the DMR record. And now it's Newberry Park, but they're at a different level. These guys are absolutely dropping, you know, crazy since Nico Young was there. Um, and now Colin Salman dropping a 358, I think it was fourth or third all time um, in the mile uh, for U.S. high school. And then you have Lex Young, the younger brother of Nico, dropping a 757 in the 3000. These kids are in high school and they're doing this. And it's just a powerhouse team and nobody's competing with them. Nobody's um, close. And it's just it, the, the, the quick rise of this team over the past, I would say, you know, two, three years. And it, they're they're just building up like they're probably their eighth or ninth kid would be like, you know, a powerhouse kid in literally yeah. any other team. You know, they'd be that kid. And to be seeing that as a team, you know, it just it, it just emphasizes the, the importance that like, you know, we like to see, you know, how the sprints and everything go. But the distance, these kids are absolutely killing it. And they're going to be, you know, the ones that are leading NCAA, you know, championships in the future. But they're doing that right now at the age of, you know, 17. Yeah, I just, I, I, it blows my mind. I don't know what you guys think about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what is in the water with the uh, whatever the food, whatever food the young family is eating. They need yeah. to release a diet plan. They need to release whatever <laughs> their trade yep. secrets because they because their family's nice. Like they you got Nico Young, Lex Young. There's another young like they, how many youngs are there that are top Salmon too? Eric, Colin, Colin, and Aaron Salmon. Aaron dropped yeah. an eight oh in eight oh one. You know, it's not it only it only was fourth all time for you for the US three thousand. Like these the these kids are just and it's I don't I don't understand it. It just it blows my mind. It, it just it reminds me of Loudon Valley when that with the Hunter brothers. Um, and you know, it just it's just it's crazy to just see how 
they're they're just nasty in every single in every single way. Distance is beautiful to watch. Yeah, I mean, look at the emergence of U.S. distance running just re- just very oh. recently with the new guys. I mean, you got Cole Hawker, Cooper Tier, Nico Young, the, the other young brothers. Uh, Luis, Gra- I mean, he's in, he's not uh, U.S., but uh, you, you got a lot of different, really, really good young distance yeah. runners, especially coming out of the U.S. That I mean, we we've got some great potential to, you know, try to make a name for ourselves on the on the distance stage because we know that yeah. that's dominated by uh, international countries traditionally or as of recently. Uh, so it's going to be good to see if we can we can have a lot of these young stars be able to transfer onto the pro circuit and be able to make names for themselves in 2024 and and hopefully 2028 down the line. Yeah, it's it's stuff. It's definitely something that I'm excited for. Um, you know, it seems it seems like nowadays you, at first, you know, seeing a, f- a high school kid going, cl- you know, close to the four minute mark or breaking that was, you know, wild. Now it's like I'm not surprised. You know, I think I think, and especially coming from American kids, I think it's it's only going to expand our program um, on the USA distance, um, you know, level. And I think it's I think it's really exciting. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well. A lot of great things happening this week in track and field. Glad we could break it down with uh, with you, Ethan and Antonio. Um, also, where, where can people go and find you if they want to hear more from your guys' stuff or, or see what's going on with y'all? Yeah, yeah. So I guess y'all can tap in with us on Instagram at The Handoff Podcast on YouTube. We have a podcast called The Handoff Podcast. You can find us on there. Um, I guess we can try to throw, throw links in the description if we get that going or something like that. Or, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got we got we got a good podcast. You know, we talk about our speed development. We talk about a little bit of track stuff. We're you know we talk about some personal stuff as well. Uh, you know, we like to be on the personal side of of track and field athletes and whatnot. Um, and you know, that's yeah, I guess we try to we try to take a different approach on it as far as we we talk about track and field, what's going on. We touch on that, and then we kind of go to what's going on in the sports world, open it up to everybody there, and then we kind of tap in with like personal thing how we feel you know how track athletes think how athletes think what it's like going in college if it's a meal plan is it good or not we we kind of talk about anything that um we know that athletes are thinking that um we just feel like they don't have a, a, a it's not getting talked about enough yeah so yeah Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for joining and thank you to everyone for listening. This has been another episode of Track World News. If you want your shot to help co-host an episode with me in the month of March, make sure that you join our inside lane. So just shoot me over a message uh, on Instagram or be on the lookout on our Instagram story when we're going to be adding new members. Uh, we got a lot of cool stuff going on in there. And uh, yeah, also make sure that you leave a like, subscribe, leave a review. Really helps us know that you're enjoying the content. If you want more stuff, go follow us on Instagram at Track World News. Uh, and that's going to be it from us here. Peace.